up everybody? Thanks for stopping by the channel. It's your boy David. Today we are going to cover how a Marini Stuff Cup is produced. We're not going to explain and get into how the Marinis are actually made, but essentially this is a technique that you can use to create a very intricate pattern. We have artist Trenton Kiocho and his assistant Jacob Wilcox at the Hilltop Artist Studio, a nonprofit organization based in Tacoma, Washington. We begin with placing the Marini pattern inside of the annealer at 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. With that aside, we get started on the collar. And the collar is the mass of glass that we will use to roll up our Marinis. Using a pair of jacks, we ensure that there is no glass clogging the blowpipe. This is important to continue the blowing process later. It is also important that the diameter of our collar is equal to one third the size of the Marini pattern. With our collar complete, we can set it aside with our assistant Jacob. He will maintain the temperature as we prepare the pattern. Now, the annealer was just an intermediate step to prevent them from breaking and exploding when they meet the intense temperature of the reheating station at 2300 degrees Fahrenheit. Powered by natural gas and forced air, our reheating station is one of our main working areas. Fortunately, I'm going to cut out most of these heats, but they are happening in the background. And although I mentioned the station is at 2300 degrees Fahrenheit, it has an uneven heat. The flames are actually located on one side, producing hot spots within this chamber. In addition, the further back you go, the hotter it gets. This causes uneven heating and is the reason we are flipping our plate after every heat. Using a propane torch, we can preheat the center of the mass. Oftentimes, it's this center that absorbs the least amount of energy. By squeezing the marinis, we can eliminate any gaps and holes. It's these gaps that cause the bubble to leak air. When we squeeze the pattern, we should see the whole pattern condense as one. When we see this, it typically means the marinis are almost ready to be rolled. With our final squeeze, we are ready for our marini roll up. Note the intense glow of the marinis. They are glowing which means they have fused to one another. Our marinis were heated on a kiln shelf lined with kiln wash to prevent the glass from fusing to the plate. Using a whisk broom, we can remove the excess kiln wash that may have come along for the ride. Our next step is to seal the gap using a set of tweezers. We can carefully meet the marinis side to side. It's important that they do not overlap to hide the seam. With the gap closed, we can now make the surface homogeneous. Our goal is to eliminate all the texture using our steel marvering table. Using a pair of tweezers, we can pinch down the opening to eventually seal what we have. We started with a flat pattern, turned it into a tube, and now we have created a bubble, a closed atmosphere that we can expand. Using a wet pad of newspaper, we can continue to eliminate the texture. And oh my god, this takes forever, everyone. After so many heats, just going back and forth between the block and the marvering table, eventually you will be left with something like this. And this is homogenous. This is exactly what we're looking for. Now we can squeeze down the jack line. The jack line being the weak spot that separates the usable glass from the steel rod. Next, we present a punty. The punty is a temporary working rod to begin to work on the opposite side. This type of punty is called a sculpture punty. It's brought over extra hot to allow us to squeeze down another jack line. This jack line will be used later to remove the punty.
Well, our cup is almost complete. The next step is to open the walls. With our stuff cup complete, the final step is to place it inside of the annealer to eliminate the stress that causes it to break, crack, or even explode. Side note, if you are interested in learning how the actual Marinis are made, drop a like, drop a sub, and I can definitely ask a homie to make some for us. Coming up next week, artist Trent and Kyocho will showcase how the Marini cup is filled with hot molten glass and turned into a rooster. I'll be posting every Wednesday, and you can always ask your questions in the comments below or follow me on different social media platforms like Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching. That was a wrap. That's a great episode. Let's run it.